Hey guys, we're gonna go over our four unconventional lifts that everybody should try. Who's everybody? All the genders. <laughs> Today we are gonna go over some of our odd lifts that we talked about in our episode. Um, this has been stuff I've been experimenting with uh, due to some injuries and some restrictions, stuff that I've never done before but I've found to be super beneficial. Um, if you're dealing with an injury or you just want to change it up, you just want to do something new, something different. Uh, first move here is Zercher squats. Um, Zerchers are, Zercher's really just the positioning of the bar. It's not, it could be anything. There's Zercher carries, Zercher lunges, Zercher whatever. So I'm going to demo today real quick with this fat bar. Now, if you don't have access to a fat bar, um, you know, you could always put a pad around the bar, something like that, because this is what you're going to be doing. It's going to be right in the crooks of your elbow, so it's not going to be on your bicep, it's not going to be on your forearm, it's going to be right where your elbow is, right in the crooks of your elbow, which is a strong position, okay? But fat bar is way easier. If you only have access to an Olympic bar, you may want to put that, uh, what they usually call it, the uh, tampon over it, right, that pad. Um, when you use a regular bar because it's going to really push into there. Um, and you're thinking to yourself, why are we doing Zerchers? Like why? What's the purpose? So, if you can't back load a bar, okay, or you just don't want to, uh, you're thinking, why can't you just do a front rack? Some people can't do a front rack or don't like the way it is, it's uncomfortable. I'm not going to say this is comfortable, this is just an odd alternative, right? So, the biggest thing with the Zercher setup, okay, which is making sure you have a comfortable position for your elbows. So you're going to get it right in the crooks of your elbow, okay, right here on the rack. What I like to do is I like to clasp my hands or you can just hold them separately, okay, it's up to you. What I'm going to do is get hips underneath it, walk back, everything's the same, just like a normal squat. Just try your best to be upright, obviously, okay. Don't let the bar come down. You want to stay upright as you can. And then walk it in. So, that's our Zercher squat. Ready? Hey guys, unconventional lift number two, the belt squat. I know what you're thinking. This isn't a fucking belt squat, <laughs> okay? So, Ever since our trip out to the Arnold and West Side, uh, I fell in love with the belt squat. That is the one machine. It's a rare machine, a lot of powerlifting gyms have, but a lot of regular gyms or some, you know, depending where you're at, there's always, there might be some version of a belt squat, but we don't have one here. Um, so one of the options um, to the belt squat is this right here. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. Full credit goes to our boy Anthony from Westside. Uh, he's the one who gave me this idea, and first time I ever did it, it was super hard. I just did a couple of 30 second marches, and my glutes were on fire. So, why the belt squat? I'll, I'll get into that right now. So, as you can see, the belt's kind of on my waist, right? Eventually I'll put these bands around me, but it's pulling you right in your center of gravity. So the bands will be on your feet and be pulling you down. So it's centrating your pelvis, decompressing your low spine, and you're able to do stuff with it. You can do squats with it, okay? You can do anything. You can do some sort of hip hinging with it, whatever it may be. So, how do you set this thing up? Well, this is our version of it. So, we have this belt here. Just a regular, I guess a weightlifting belt. The Velcro on here and all that. So, all you're gonna do, first you're gonna put the band through the metal part, okay? Then, Drop the belt on nice and tight. Now to get these bands on, you're gonna to have to sit down. It's just gonna be fucking impossible for you to try to pull your feet. So, you're gonna be here. Make sure it's right in the arch of your foot. It's not too far back, too far forward. It doesn't snap up, hit you in the uh, privates there, or in the face. So, I got one in, got the other one in. Okay, get myself situated. Now I'm gonna stand up. You can see the tension on the bands, right? And all we're gonna do, for uh, first move, pretty much just march. And just think you're putting pressure into your feet, right? Pushing, spreading the floor apart. Do this for time. First time I ever did it for 30 seconds, I thought I was gonna die. 
But now I'm up to a minute. So this is a good drill, and it's helped my back a ton. I've been having back issues for a while, but like I said, ever since I tried the belt squat at West Side, I was like, okay, found a nice alternative. Now, so that's the marching. You can always do squats. Squats to a boxer bench. So that are some options with the belt squat or our uh, homemade version here. Anthony, thank you for the tip. That's our belt squat. All right guys, unconventional lift. Number three, the landmine press. As you can see, this is our setup for the landmine. So we're gonna go up on how to set up the landmine press, okay? There's a few different options. Some gyms may actually have a landmine. So we're gonna look down to here real quick, okay? So this is not an actual landmine, but there's a landmine piece here. We just took two bumper plates, Rogue makes this, is actually pretty dope. It goes right in, and then you can put the barbell into here, and that'll be your landmine, okay? There's also other ones, they'll be like, they kind of look like home plate, and they'll have this attached to it, all right? Um, if some gyms have them, but what are you gonna do, just like the belt squat, what are you gonna do if they don't have it and you wanna try this lift, right? So, there's a few options, kind of like think of it, for all those meatheads out there back in the day, when you used to do T-bar rows. Y'all remember that setup? So, what we're gonna do is put the bar right in the corner of the rack. Okay? So, the biggest thing about this, mostly with the T-bar row, but I guess here too, is do not, make sure that thing doesn't fly out. Okay, you really wanna push it into there Okay. And make sure it stays. So this is just we're just using the corner of a rack. Uh, preferably, as someone that's worked in gyms most of their life, do not use the corner of a wall and create a fucking giant hole in the wall and get yelled at and then get kicked out of your gym and your parents disown you. It's just bad. So these are some viable options for the landmine. Okay, I think corner of the rack would be good for most people. If you have a landmine set up like that, then you're just good to go. A few different benefits to this, okay. Landmine press can be done, it's a single arm motion, okay. Get a lot of single arm work. You're pressing not directly overhead or in a horizontal plane, you're right in the middle. And on top of that, you'll see the position of my hand is neutral. So I'm not on a fixed bar like this or I'm not underhand, I'm in a nice neutral position. This is really, anyone can do it, and I think it's a great lift, but it's, you know, people that really struggle getting overhead, or maybe even keeping an arch in a bench press or something like that, this is a great pressing alternative, okay? So, I'm gonna demo real quick. Now, one other thing I should bring up. Obviously, you see the barbell, we're not pressing from this end, we're pressing from the fat end. So, anytime you use a fat grip, it's just gonna engage more muscles. It's gonna, it's gonna force you to squeeze more just to create more stability, right? So first I'm just gonna show you standing, okay? So right here, stand nice and tall, butt squeezed, press up. See, it's nice and neutral right in the middle. Come down, up, down, okay. Now, that's standing. Another thing, besides this being super upper body, shoulder healthy and all that stuff, you can do this from tall kneeling, from half kneeling, a bunch of different positions. Now you're involving hips, glutes, core, and you're working on split stand stability, right? So, I'm gonna drop down, and you can go either side, it doesn't matter. You could press with the side of the leg that's down, or go side of the leg that's up. Whatever you want to do. We'll go side of the leg that's down just for the sake of this video. Make sure, Back toe dug into the floor. This glute is on and forward. You're gonna here, press straight up and down. Same thing, same pressing motion. Okay, we're just working now. We have a hip flexed, hip extended. You're forced to stabilize here. When you go to switch sides, you can go to the leg, or you can stay on that side. Last 
tip from the landmine press. As you saw when I was pressing, I had my hand on my rib cage, okay? Because usually when it comes to overhead or benching, being very extended or going overhead will cause you to compensate some of the low back, whatever it is. I know for me, I'm naturally very extended in a certain position, so you gotta try to close that thing down. So I'm keeping a hand on my rib cage, so as I'm pressing, I don't let this thing flare up, okay? You wanna keep it glued down. That's why I keep my hand there, okay? If you're having rib cage issues, to create now more tension in the lift, because it's, you know, it is single arm, things like that, you'll use your free hand kind of as a trigger. So I'll do one demo with that real quick. So when I go to press, as opposed to just, you know, my butt squeezing all that, as opposed to just here, you're going to use this as a trigger. You're going to squeeze this hand as hard as you can, okay? Squeeze, press, just to help create cross-body tension because it's a unilateral move. Okay, so you're not using two at once. Um, and that is our landmine press. What's up guys? It's Nick from the Strength Squad Podcast. We are gonna be going over our last odd lift, not really odd lift, but um, lateral sled drags, okay? Now, we've talked a ton about training in different planes of motion. We have videos on it on YouTube. We always talk about it, okay? When we had Dr. Stu McGill on, he talked about how the frontal plane is the injury prevention plane. There's a few ways to do this, right? Um, you're looking for stability in the frontal plane. One way is to walk, so normal walking or sled dragging. Um, walk, when I say walking, I mean like just walking normally, no weight or anything like that. The other is lateral sled dragging, okay? This is a great way to work internal external rotation of the hip, Okay, and meanwhile, getting that drive off because those lateral stabilizers are very important. Like we said, everything we do is usually in the sagittal plane, which is front to back. We want to worry about side to side and also our rotation. Okay, so lateral sled drag. How do you do it? So this is our setup. Okay, everyone's is going to be different. You may have a prowler with a hook on the front and you may have to rig up something like this where you have a strap and a TRX, whatever. Figure it out. Um, make sure the strap is long enough to where you can actually get like, a little bit of a lean. You don't want to be too close to it or else you're just going to be <laughs> hitting yourself in the foot with the sled. Um, so, here's how you perform the lateral sled, sled drag. So, I got both handles in my hand, okay? I can go with the thick handle, I can go with the lighter handles, whatever. It does not matter. So, I'm going to go lighter handles. And all I'm going to do is I want you to think you're going to be stepping up. Pushing over, and you're crossing over. Okay, so you're here, driving me up, driving me up, driving me up. Make sure this leg that's closest to the sled, that's the one you're pushing off of, crossing in front of you. Okay, obviously, I just did that one way. You can do it. Gotta hit both sides so you can do the other way. And that is our lateral sled drag. Just wanna thank you for watching this video on our four unconventional lifts. To remind you, we had zercher squats, landmine presses, our modified belt squat, and lateral sled drags. For any questions or anything like that, don't be afraid to reach out to our social media, share the video. Um, any questions, anything we can help you with, or if you have questions about setup or anything like that, maybe something we missed, please reach out to us. Want more of the Strength Squad? You can check out all of our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, check us out on YouTube where you can watch all of your favorite Strength Squad videos. Don't forget to leave a five-star review on iTunes and Stitcher. Stitcher, I just met her. We would like to thank our friends at Plant Warrior Protein, official sponsor of the Strength Squad podcast. Plant Warrior plant-based protein is easier on your stomach and contains a complete amino acid profile that helps you grow, maintain, and repair your muscles. It gives you 18 grams of protein per serving and it's made from a blend of rice, pea, and hemp. Plant Warrior pledges to plant one tree for every item you purchase at their online store. 
head over to plantwarrior.co. That's plantwarrior.co and use the promo code STRENGTH10 to get 10% off of your purchase. That's promo code STRENGTH10 for 10% off of any Plant Warrior purchase.